From the Toronto Star, I'm Rudy Mudder, and this matters. It's, you know, dog racism, it's discrimination at its worst. You look like a biting dog, you look like a bad dog, therefore we're going to incarcerate you. That's Tommy Chang, the owner of a dog named Deji, who's been at the center of controversy that once again puts Ontario's ban on pit bulls in the spotlight. Many dog lovers here have been unhappy for over 15 years, ever since Ontario passed a law that banned a number of dog breeds, as well as dogs that had the physical characteristics of pit bulls. In fact, it's the only province that has this type of breed-specific legislation. Over the past few weeks, we've seen some extraordinary events, where what started out with a dog being taken from his family now involves public rallies, dog DNA tests, and the premier of the province getting involved, leading to the government tweaking the laws. But then, Incredibly unfortunately, after Mr. Chang made this statement, the dog in question did in fact bite and injure a 13-year-old boy, which there is video of. And those who've seen it think it raises even more questions about what actually happened here. It is an incredible series of events, and to discuss it, we are joined by Liam Casey. He is a reporter with the Canadian Press who has carved out a niche with his stellar animal journalism. He joins us to talk about the recent news regarding pit bulls in the province. Liam, thank you so much for joining us once again. Well, thanks for having me, my man. I really appreciate it. So, Liam, listen, we're going to be discussing a very, very specific case, but I think we need to start with the laws surrounding it. Pit bulls are banned in Ontario. Can you give us a little bit of background on how that happened? Sure. So there's only two animals banned province-wide in Ontario, pit bulls and killer whales. Pit bulls were banned in 2005 after a series of high-profile bites and maulings including two pit bulls who attacked and seriously injured a Toronto man. And in 2005, the Attorney General at the time, Michael Bryant, introduced legislation to ban pit bulls. And it was controversial at the time. A lot of dog owners, a lot of dog lovers felt that it punished wrongly the dog rather than dog owners. And there are some interesting things in the legislation that further upset people. There are four types of dogs that are considered pit bulls. And so they are considered a pit bull terrier, Staffordshire bull terrier, an American Staffordshire terrier, and an American pit bull terrier. If you have one of those four, those are banned. You are liable to go up to jail for six months, or you can be fined 10,000 bucks if you're found guilty of having a pit bull terrier. They've banned the importation of pit bulls. They've also banned breeding. So you'd have to, if you had a pit bull at the time, it would be grandfathered in. The idea was to eradicate pit bulls from the province. There is a very controversial clause that in addition to the four breeds I just named, there's sort of this fifth clause that says a dog that has an appearance and physical characteristics that are substantially similar to those four dogs. So that has allowed animal control officers, animal cruelty enforcement officers, police as well, they all have the power to take a dog if they believe it looks like a pit bull. And that has sort of caused a lot of anger, generally speaking, with dog owners who feel that they've been wrongly targeted across the province just because their dog might look like a pit bull, you know, might have the facial characteristics, kind of the broad sort of head. And there are breeds out there that do in fact look like pit bulls, but aren't those four that I named that are actually banned. Well, I think this is one of the issues here, right? Like the criticisms that I really want to talk about there is it's really, really hard to actually define a dog breed, right? Yeah. So they do apparently will do DNA testing and we can get into that with the case of Deji. But yeah, like it seems to me that these animal control officers, these animal welfare service places can hold these dogs for a while without laying any charges against the dog owners. And the dog owners have complained that they don't really have any sort of recourse unless they're charged, you know. However, they have the power to take your dog. So these are like quite profound police powers that are out there that appear to have some checks and balances missing at this point according to some of these dog owners who've had their dogs taken that they supposedly look like pit bulls. So this is sort of setting the scene for where we've come in the last month or so. Right. 
This brings us to the case of a very well-known dog now. King Kong Blue, or Deji, is a dog that's been in the news. Can you tell us what happened in this case? Okay, so about a month ago, right around Thanksgiving, just before Canadian Thanksgiving, the Changs, Tommy Chang, who is an actor and a stuntman in Vaughn, his dog, Deji, who is an American bully, got loose from his home. A neighbor saw the dog, I think, on the front lawn, didn't know what to do, called the local Vaughn Animal Services, who came and picked up the dog. So, you know, eventually, you know, Tommy's out there looking with his family, trying to find the dog. They're getting pretty upset. And, you know, they're making calls. They eventually call Vaughn Animal Services, who tell them, yeah, we've got the dog, but we're not giving him back because he looks like a pit bull. Again, so that goes back to that clause I was telling you about earlier. And then this case just starts to drag on. So they have Deji, the dog, and the Changs want their dog back. At this point, the dog's done nothing except for get loose and then look like a pit bull. So Tommy doesn't really know what to sort of do. He starts calling around, you know, there's quite a few sort of, I guess, pit bull activists or advocates around the province who have been trying to change the pit bull ban for a long time. Tommy starts getting in touch with some of these people who have had similar experiences as well. A few others, some in Vaughan, some out in West Gray, which is up near Owen Sound, who the same thing where they've had dogs who are American bullies who've been taken by the local animal control guys and held in some cases for months and months. And I was able to start talking to some of these dog owners. And Tommy is also trying to figure out along the way, how do I get my dog back? He hires a lawyer. He's talking to these animal advocates. He's talking to people who've had their dogs kind of taken, but there's no real solution. Tommy's lawyer, Leo Kinahan, tells me that, you know, as sort of days turn into kind of weeks, like he's begging Vaughn Animal Services to charge his client. Says he's never asked anyone in his entire 25 year career as a lawyer to charge one of his clients. But he's like, I need some recourse. At least if there's charges, we can get in front of a judge or a justice of the peace, an independent, you know, judicial officer who can weigh the facts of the case against the law. Right now, during this time, there was no charges, nothing, but they had the dog and there was no way for the family to get the dog back. Vaughn Animal Services sort of gives them kind of a couple of choices. It says we can either put him down or we can send him out of the province and you can help us send him out of the province. So I think every other province does not have a pit bull ban. So what often happens in these cases is the owners will work with the municipality or whoever has taken the dog to figure out where you can send them so they can stay alive in a different province. And that happened with a couple other dog owners that I spoke to. So at this point, you know, we're talking kind of mid-October, Tommy doesn't know what to do. Then he starts to go to the media and stories start coming out. You know, they got my dog, my dog's done nothing wrong. This groundswell of support is gathering. And also the activists, and some of them know Ford a little bit, Doug Ford, a lot like his brother, Rob Ford, will just call people back who get in touch with them. His cell phone is out there and it's known. So some of these people who've lost their dogs start calling Doug Ford and they start texting Doug Ford. And to their surprise, he starts returning calls. (laughs) I really want to unpack this because from your reporting, Doug Ford, who is the premier of Ontario, and just in case you do not know, (laughs) starts to respond to some of these people and gets a little bit involved in this case. What did you find out about his old past with some of these type of dogs? And did he ease some of these rules? Okay, so yeah, there's a bit to unpack here. So the Premier of Ontario, so this issue goes right to the top office in Ontario. And so Doug Ford starts calling some of these people back. He calls this woman back, Deanna Wheeler, who lives out in West Gray. She had her dog, again, an American bully, taken in March. And, you know, that back and forth lasts for three months. And she had to send that dog to a person in... Quebec. Get that dog out of Ontario so it's safe, but it's no longer with them. There's two dogs, sorry, two American boys. And so she starts texting Doug Ford, and then he calls back. This is maybe three weeks ago. So he calls her back the next day and listens to her story. And then he basically says, you know, I'm going to take care of this. She's like, okay. You know, she's kind of blown away that Doug Ford has even bothered to respond, let alone call her. You know, she calls herself a normal nobody. I don't know what's going on. And then he's like, I'm going to take care of this. He ends up also talking to Tommy Chang. Tommy had reached out to his local MPP, Michael Tobolo. There's, you know, several other of the advocates in the world were also reaching out to Ford, Ford's office, their local MPPs, you know, and everyone seems to be on the kind of same page from the provincial conservatives to get something done. 
And meanwhile, Tommy's kind of got this groundswell of support going. They ended up having a big rally down at Queen's Park. And then at one point, Tommy gets a call from Doug Ford. This was a Thursday night. And so Deji's still at Vaughn Animal Services. And Ford tells Tommy that he's going to fix the pit bull rule. He says he promised to, to repeal the pit bull ban within 120 days. And he's also trying to work in the meantime on this other issue of the seizure of the dogs who look like pit bulls, that kind of issue. Fast forward, say, I think four days to Monday. And then you know, Tommy gets a call from his lawyer. Lawyer's like, Listen, Von Animal Services says we're going to release Deji. And so he's you know, really happy. There's conditions put on by Von Animal Services who says you, know, you can't bring any media and things like this. And they're like, sure, fine. And so Monday they go and they get their dog. He's got video of it. The dog comes kind of, you know, out the back door of Von Animal Services. And, you know, he's wagging his tail like really big. And then so it's a big kind of happy reunion. And, you know, so Doug Ford was also telling this same story basically to several other owners. And he was, you know, listening to this woman, Deanna Wheeler, I was mentioning before. He tells her, well, you know, I used to have two pit bulls, two American Staffordshires, and tells her these are the best dogs I ever had. You know, so he's on the same page, you know, that it sounds to me like he's agreeing that it's owners, not dogs, who are the problem, right? And so then on the same day that Deji gets released, Ontario quietly updates regulations in the Animals for Research Act, specifically about pit bulls. And it's quite legalese and we got kind of wind of it they didn't really tell anybody about this so what they ended up doing is changing these regulations so that if somebody takes your dog and they say it looks like a pit bull you know we believe it's a pit bull they have to conduct an investigation so what this regulation change does is allow that dog to be returned to its family with a lot of conditions on it you know it's going to have to be muzzled it can't leave your property it can't be around children it can't be around the public all this sort of thing. But what happened is Vaughn didn't release the dog under the new regulations, even though coincidentally it happened on the same day. Vaughn says they finished their investigation. And they don't really provide any other details, but they released the dog, which is important that it wasn't released under any of these conditions. The dog is just basically back home, back home with the Changs. Changs are ecstatic. You know, but Tommy told me, this is, I think the next day I had a long chat with Tommy, and he told me that, you know, the dog, it's great, everyone's happy, but, you know, the dog just seems a little off. The dog's been in, you know, a shelter, like one of these sort of pounds for a month. Dog seems a little off. You know, it has some issues with urinating and defecating in the house and a few other things that are a bit kind of different. You know, the dog just doesn't seem himself at this point. We'll be right back. The dog's basically been taken away for three weeks to a month. It's been in a shelter. Now we fast forward to later. This is just that this dog has been freed for about a week. And then I believe it's taken to the owner. He owns a martial arts studio. What happens next? Yeah. So Tommy owns several martial arts studios. And so there's one down in, I think it's Bloor and Ossington. And his son is there. His son is teaching class. His son, Johan, is 20 years old. And he's got a class Friday night. These you know, are teenagers he's teaching. And then Friday night, so Tommy's not there, Johan's there, and then a 13-year-old kid who's in the class gets bit by Deji. In the face. In the face. And news breaks, I think, on Sunday night that there was a kid who was bitten in the face. He's got like 30 stitches. The, the visuals really don't look good on this kid. And there's sort of multiple kind of stitches around on his left cheek. And so the 13-year-old boy, Mohammed, he says that... Johan, Tommy's son, challenges him after class to confront his fears of dogs. And so they have Deji there in the dojo. Deji's tied up to a pole in sort of this back kind of room. And so the boy Mohammed says, you know, so I'm told to confront my fears. And I go over to the dog and the dog just leaps up and bites me in the face. So this story kind of starts to take off because it's the same dog that, you know, Doug Ford took an interest in. And four days later, the dog bites a kid in the face. Obviously, the dog had become a cause celebrity before. Like, I mean, this is one of those like evil heel turns in a movie because the dog had not done anything beforehand. <laughs> and now there's this. Now, here's the thing, Liam. I think I need to be careful about this because there is video of this incident. You've actually seen it. What can you tell us about what you saw? 
So the lawyer, Leo Kinahan, calls several reporters up to his office in Newmarket to look at the video. They're upset at the story that's being told by the boy and his father, who they say it's not entirely true. They completely deny that Johan told the boy to confront his fears of dogs. So that's just an outright denial. They say that never happened. I'm up there with star reporter Betsy Powell. And we are looking at this video, and it's surveillance video of the back room of the dojo. And there's no sound. They say there's no sound, so that is sort of an important issue. And it's about a 10-minute kind of interaction from when we first see the boy Muhammad kind of come into the back room. And there's a chair next to Deji. Deji has a harness kind of around his haunches attached to a leash, which is attached to a pole in the corner of this room and there's padding all along the floors so i guess be common in a martial arts studio and then there's a chair right beside the dog and generally the room is empty and then you know the boy comes in and kind of sits next to the dog and looks like he's kind of like at one point kind of leaning kind of out of his chair closer to the dog and kind of talking to the dog and the dog's really not doing much dog's kind of looking up most of the time the dog is lying on its belly just on the ground and then at one point you know some other kind of kids kind of come in and then the boy kind of takes off and the dog actually kind of like runs after him as the boy takes off but he's caught by his leash so this is kind of going on for about 10 minutes where kids are kind of coming into the back including the boy and then you know the boy would often kind of come over sit next to the dog and most of the time again the dog is either sitting or lying down and you know at one point he does sort of a dance in front of the dog you know almost like a monkey type of dance and then another point he kind of runs around the room you know all pretty like harmless stuff he doesn't really appear to be in like the dog's face or anything he has never touched the dog at this point other than that point when he ran away the dog really doesn't move much doesn't do much you know and you know the dog's tail is kind of wagging a lot and there's other kids kind of coming and going then at one point, sort of around the 10 minute mark, Johan kind of comes in. He looks to have sort of a bit of a conversation with, I think, four or five of the kids. And then they're, they're sort of moving some tables and stuff around in this back room. And then Johan moves the chair and then he brings a table next to the chair and the dog kind of gets up a little bit and the dog sits back down. And then Muhammad kind of comes over and he's standing and he's walking near the dog. And then he kind of leans a little bit, like leans his head down a touch, extends his arm to me it looks like he may be going to kind of pet him you know maybe on his haunches or the top of his head and then just instantly the dog who's on his stomach just leaps up right into muhammad's face and then kind of comes back down so it's all kind of in one motion and then you just see muhammad kind of stumble backwards and then kind of grab his face and then run out of the room. The boy's dad is there too. He's not in the video. He's in kind of in the main kind of area of the room. So you eventually see the dad kind of come in. He's on the phone. The dad's kind of wagging his finger, you know, at Johan. And, you know, that's kind of the end of the video. So they are taking issue with the fact that the boy says he was told to confront his fears. And then also the dog was brought to him, you know. So that's kind of like where we stand right now it's a bit of a he said he said case right now okay i don't want to go any further but let's just be very clear i think at this point mr chang is not talking and i believe deji is not in any custody right now right as far as we know as far as we know deji is apparently out of the toronto area at some place getting retrained this is according to Tommy's lawyer. Yeah, Tommy has not been talking since this happened. They had planned a big celebration that Sunday, but the dog bite happened on the Friday, you know, and it appeared that there was a bunch of momentum to repeal this, what's known as breed-specific legislation. And, you know, with Ford's involvement, it sort of looked like this might happen, according to what he was sort of telling everybody, and then with the regulation change. But Ford came out the other day, we asked him at a press conference about the case and about the legislation legislation and he just said nothing's changing right now so that right now i guess gives a little bit of wiggle room it could change but it appears we're at a bit of a standstill from this legislation issue so liam i think there's a lot of factors in here one of the issues is, is obviously the seizure of the dog in the shelter system he was in now i assume the family is thinking that might have affected the dog's behavior you also recently wrote another story about another family that's trying to get their dogs back so i mean are there concerns about when the government takes these dogs Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting case. So that's a case of a a company called Windrift Adventures that runs dog sledding. So they have more than 200 dogs 
And so the government of Ontario in 2020, they took over animal cruelty enforcement. So they have sort of a new group that, you know, has police powers, can seize dogs, they can hold dogs. And, you know, that power used to be owned by the OSPCA, but they abdicated that power a couple of years ago. And the Ontario government has launched their own animal welfare services team who investigate allegations of cruelty. They also look into inspections at zoos and aquariums. And so this case is also kind of interesting because this is a family-owned case, but this is their business, right? And they seize the 200 dogs. They seize the 200 dogs. They've had 200 dogs for almost two months now. Winter's approaching, which is when, you know, sled dog season's around. And three dogs have died in government's care in that time. And there's a bacterial infection that was in two of them. And there's a third one that had a bunch of things wrong with it, including liver cancer. The family found out about the dogs only after they died. So there's these things going on. There was no offers of, well, what kind of treatment should we do, et cetera. So they are taking them to court. It's called the Animal Care Review Board. It's this quasi-judicial board that deals with animal cruelty enforcement. And it's essentially an appeal court. So they've appealed. And that case actually gets underway today. They want their dogs back. So they're fighting the seizure and they're also fighting the decision for the government to keep their dogs. We went back to the pit bulls. Is there anything that I didn't ask that you think our listeners should know? I don't think so. I think the big issue going forward is whether the, the government's going to do anything about this breed specific legislation. Of course, we've got an election year coming up, so it could be one of those situations where it's a hot potato and they may not want to get into it. A lot of animal advocates are worried that it's dead in the water right now because of the dog bite. Before the dog bite, everyone sort of felt like they had sort of, you know, momentum was on their side. They had this kind of easing of regulations related to the investigation around a pit bull. And sort of a lot of people believed, especially after hearing Doug Ford tell several people that he was going to repeal it. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, what kind of happens politically in the next few months. So I'm going to stay on top of the situation, as you know, and we'll sort of see where that ends up. Well, it's a fascinating story. And the question is whether Mr. Ford wants to court the dog lover vote or if this is too hot a political potato. This has been fantastic for us, Liam. I want to thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thanks, bud. Talk soon. Liam Casey is a reporter with the Canadian Press. That's it for today. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm your host, Raju Mudder. Our This Matters team is Adrian Chung, Brian Bradley, J.P. Fozo, Matt Hearn, Morgan Bockneck, Saba Etizaz, and Sean Pattenden. Our music is by so-called Mike DeAngelis and Sean Pattenden. We want to hear what stories matter to you. Please send us comments, questions, or ideas to thismatters at thestar.ca. Please consider supporting the journalism the Toronto Star Newsroom does at thestar.com slash subscribing matters. And don't forget to subscribe to This Matters on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Let's talk soon.